for because of uh, these reasons global retailers distributors food manufacturers and food service companies are now concerned more about the safety of their food supply chain than ever before because they have to keep their brand value they have to avoid expensive product recalls and they have to avoid spending money for from giving compensation so organization in food sector need to manage the risk they have to demonstrate good corporate responsibility they have to meet legal requirements if they are to remain competitive they have to protect their reputation and they have to enhance their brand so these goals can be achieved only through an effective food safety management system so this is the need for implementing a food safety management system in order to manage the risk in order to exhibit good corporate uh, responsibility in order to meet the legal requirements in order to remain competitive in order to protect the reputation and in order to enhance their brand value food say food industry has to implement a food safety management system now let us see what are the emerging trends in food safety food safety legislation so world health organization who and food and agriculture organization fao have set up codex alimentarius and the mission of this codex alimentarius is to set international food standards to help governments and business to achieve adequate consumer protection so codex helps to raise the awareness of governments on food safety issues and serves as a reference for food safety standards and food regulations the codex helps to facilitate international trade in foods by preventing unscientific restrictions while considering differences in tradition culture the and legal systems among countries so what codex is doing is to raise the awareness of awareness on food safety issues and they set international food standards to help governments and business operators to achieve adequate consumer protection and in india this is done by government of india by enacting the food safety and standards act 2006 so this act was uh, passed passed in 2006 and the rules and regulations were set up in 2011 so this is the current food safety legislation in india it is food safety and standards act so the objective of this uh, act was to consolidate the laws relating to all the laws relating to food and they established a food safety and standards authority of india for laying down science based standards so it is fsc who is uh, laying down the standards in india for all articles of food and they are also regulating the manufacture storage distribution sale and import of food items in india so because of uh, these food safety legislations food processing industry has to meet all these regulations these are the legal requirements to meet all these regulations they have to implement a food safety system to keep the food safe and wholesome another trend is customer audits of food and food products you must see now that large food organizers are always responsible for the safety and 
quality of food products supplied by them they always own the responsibility they always take the responsibility for the safety and quality of food products the large food organizations will take the responsibility for safety and quality of food products supplied by them so for ensuring the safety they take the precautions of auditing the suppliers of their suppliers of raw materials their suppliers food hygienic arrangements and they usually carry out testing of the raw materials before purchasing in order to ensure the safety of the product so many organizations operate quality assurance systems to ensure that information regarding the product quality and safety is available to them in the form of records so the large food organizations always require their suppliers their suppliers the suppliers of raw materials to have the quality assurance systems and to make information from suppliers system available to them as part of due diligence approach to food safety so these are always happening in the large food organizations now the food management food safety management system so the difference against growing and evolving threat of food borne disease and illness can be achieved by the application of a preventive risk assessment food based food safety programs like hscp hazard analysis and critical control point and iso 22000 so by implementing such food safety management systems the food industry can ensure, can ensure that food is safe from contamination so it is free from organisms or the chemicals causing food borne diseases and illness so hazard analysis and critical control point system hsccp is a systematic and science based process that identifies the hazards in a food product or food industry and the measures which are necessary for the control of these hazards to ensure a safe food product so it is ccp can be applied throughout the food chain from primary production on the farm to consumption of food in the home or restaurant another food safety system is iso 22000 it is a generic food safety management standard and it, it can be used by any organization directly or indirectly involved in food chain be it a very small organization or a big organization they can use iso 22000 food safety management system or the standard they can develop a system based on this standard iso 22000 standard so this system iso 22000 system shows the organizations how to combine the hscp principles along with prerequisite programs and operational prerequisite programs into a single integrated food safety management strategy so this iso 22000 combines the principles of hscp and the prerequisite and operational prerequisite programs and makes a single integrated food safety management strategy So that is the end of unit two, food safety system. So so far we were dealing with food safety and the system used for managing the food safety. Now we can move on to quality management. So far we dealt with safety management. Now we can move on to quality management. That is chapter number three, unit number three.
quality management. So the next unit is total quality management. So now let us first see what is meant by quality. So let us say what is quality. So the word quality is most commonly used by use word by all of us. We you always use the word quality. So at the same time, this is one of the most difficult word to define properly. So there are some definitions of quality. Quality is the fitness for use. Quality is conformance to requirements. Quality is correcting and preventing loss, not living with the loss. So these are some definitions of quality. Some more definitions are given there. So these are some definitions. So these definitions are not actually defining the quality fully. So the universally accepted definition of quality is provided by ISO. This is the universally accepted definition of quality. That is by ISO. ISO defines quality as the degree to which a set of in inherent characteristics of an entity fulfills the requirements. The quality is the degree to which a set of inherent characteristics of an entity fulfills the requirements. So entity means it can be a process, it can be a product or an organization. So the degree to which the inherent characteristics of a process or the inher inherent characteristics of a product or the inherent characteristics of an organization fulfills the requirements of it may be requirements of customer or legal requirement or any such requirement. So the degree to which these requirements are fulfilled, that is quality. So quality is the degree to which a set of inherent characteristics of an entity fulfills the requirements. That is the most universally accepted definition of quality. So we have said that this entity can be a process, a product or an organization. Now let us see what is a product. What is meant by a product? So in the quality management scenario, a product means the result of a process. Product means the result of a process. It can be a material, it can be a processed material or it can be a service, it can be a hardware, it can be a software. So all these things are together known as products in quality management scenario. Now let us see what are the dimensions of quality. So the various dimensions of quality which customers look for in a product. Product means a process product, service, anything. So the various dimensions of quality which customers look for in a product in order to satisfy their needs determine the characteristics of that particular product. So for a manufactured product, the dimensions of quality are these. Performance, features, Reliability, conformity, durability, serviceability, aesthetics, perceived quality. All these are the dimensions of quality for the manufactured product. Now in the case of a service, the dimensions are this. Time. How much time does a customer wait for a service? Timeliness. Then completeness, courtesy, consistency, accessibility and convenience, accuracy, responsiveness. All these are the 
dimensions of quality for a service. So only if these dimensions are met or all these characteristics are met, then we say that that service is a quality service. So in order for a for service to meet quality, has to meet all these needs. Now let us see the facets of quality. There are four facets of quality. These are the four facets of quality. So the, these four facets of quality cover most of the quality dimensions which we have already seen. First is the quality due to definition of needs for the product. Quality due to the definition of needs for the product. So if the extent and completeness of defining and updating the product needs to meet the market requirements. That is one of the facets of quality. So always a product is developed based on the needs of the market, based on the needs of people, based on the needs of the market, a product is always designed and produced. So the completeness of defining the needs the completeness of updating the needs of a particular product according to the market requirement that will bring some quality to the product. So that is one of the first facet of quality. So that is the quality due to definition of needs for the product. Now the second one is quality due to product design. The second facet of quality is due to designing into the product the characteristics that enable it to meet the marketplace requirements. So, the product is defined according to the marketing market needs. Now, the designing of the product to meet these needs, that will bring some quality to the product. So, that is the quality due to product design. Now, third one is quality due to conformity to product design. So the, now the product is, uh, the needs are defined, then according to that need, the product is designed. Now, the product is produced. Now the third facet is that, the conformity to product design. When the product is produced, it should conform to the product design. So that will bring some quality to the product. So that is the quality due to conformity to the product design. So day-to-day -day consistency, maintaining the day-to-day -day consistency in conforming to product design. That will bring some quality to the product. So that is the third facet. Now, fourth one is quality due to product support. So furnishing product support throughout its life cycle as needed, that will bring some quality to the product, quality, that is quality due to product support. So these are the four facets of quality and this will cover all the dimensions of quality which we have discussed earlier. Now let us see what is meant by a process. Now we have seen what is a product. Now let us see what is a process. In any organization, all type of work is accomplished by a process. So the work is accomplished by a process. And ISO defines the process as a set of interrelated or interacting activities which transform inputs into outputs. So a process is an interrelated activity or an interacting activity which transforms input into output. So any process will have some input and some output. Or one input and one output. So any process will have input and output. So, so the input Inputs after value addition results into outputs. That is the process. The output of a process. 
Examples for the output of a process are an invoice, computing software, liquid fuel, clinical device, banking service, or intermediate food products. These are all output of a process. The an input is the and after value addition, this results into output. All the processes in an organization must be effectively managed to have a product with quality. In order to maintain the quality of product, all the processes in an organization must be effectively managed. So, in every organization, in every organization, there will be some value addition work. There will be input and after value addition, it is converted to output. So every organization exists to accomplish value addition work. So this work is accomplished through a network of processes and sub-processes. That means the work in an organization can be divided into different processes and sub processes. So, if we consider a particular sub process, sub process, it will have an internal supplier and internal customer because every process should have an input and output. So, the one who is providing the input is supplier, and the one who is using the output is a customer. So, every process or every sub process in an organization will have an internal supplier and internal customer. So because of this, everyone in an organization serves a customer or serves someone who is serving a customer. So everyone in an organization will be serving a customer or serving someone who is serving a customer. So this supplier customer chain is formed by all the processes processes and persons operating them in an organization so the quality of a work quality of the work of a person or a process which serves as a link in the chain designs the quality of product provided to the customer so the quality of the work of a person or the quality of a sub-process serves as a sub-process will define the quality of product, final product provided to the customer. So you know, if you want to produce a quality product, then each and every sub-process, each and every process and sub-process in the organization must have, must be done, must, must meet some quality. Now let us see the terms quality control and quality assurance. You, know, you must have heard these two terms quality control and quality assurance. These two are not the same things, these two are different aspects of maintaining the quality, quality control and quality assurance. So quality control, ISO defines quality control as a part of quality management focused on fulfilling the quality requirements. So this is a part of quality management and it is focused on fulfilling the quality requirements of a product or process. So it is focused on fulfilling the quality requirements, while the quality assurance, it is defined as part of quality management focused on providing the confidence that quality requirements will be fulfilled. So quality assurance means it is providing a confidence that all the quality requirements will be fulfilled, while quality control is focused on fulfilling the quality requirements. So quality assurance is a preventive activity. Quality assurance is a preventive activity and it is 
so required to be systematically planned in advance. Quality assurance should be planned in advance. It is a preventive activity. While the quality control involves the inspection of the product to determine the conformance to the requirements. And these are the other characteristics of quality control. Now let us see another term known as total quality management. So in order to maintain the total quality of a product, the latest approach is the total quality management. So this is defined by ISO as the ma as a management approach of an organization centered on quality and based on the participation of all its members and aiming at long-term success through customer satisfaction and benefits to all members of the organization and to the society. So this total quality management is used for achieving the total quality of the product. So it is a management approach of an organization. Quality, total quality management is a management approach of an organization which is centered on quality. And it requires the participation of all its members and it aims at long-term success through customer satisfaction and it aims at the benefits to all members of the organization and to the society. So it takes into account all the members of the organization. All the members of the organization are involved in quality management and this is aimed at long-term success through customer satisfaction and it aims at the benefits to all the members of the organization and to the society. So that is, that approach is known as total quality management approach. So what is the need for a total quality management approach in an organization? So in earlier days, the quality was not a big problem because the emphasis was on individual craftsmanship, workmanship and individual skills. In those era, the quality was not a problem. But when the era of mass production initiated industrial revolution, the quality started getting attention. And now in the present world of competition, the quality has taken a central place in determining the organizational objectives. In this competitive world, quality has taken the central place. So some of the important factors which is leading organizations towards a total quality management approach are First one, the question of survival in an intense competitive environment. So in order to survive in an intense competitive environment, organizations has to meet the quality requirements. So usually, after identifying a particular need, one or few suppliers emerge to provide a particular product or service to satisfy the needs of customer. So when a need is identified, one of the suppliers will come up with that particular product or service. So this leads to a near monopoly situation. And this type of market is known as seller's market. The, the seller will decide the price of the product or service and consumer or the customer has to agree to that. But after some time, more and more supplies will come up. And this will create a buyer's market 
because that is known as bias market because customer has options to choose a supplier so they can choose the supplier so that is known as a bias market so due to globalization and liberalization economic barriers have broken down and the whole world has become a one big market so this has increased the competition between the manufacturers and the suppliers so for all the suppliers all over the world it has become a question of survival so this has given rise to the present concept of total quality management so another important factor leading to the total quality management is increasing customer awareness so customers are becoming increasingly conscious about getting more than just value for money paid for a particular product or service and also there are a number of government and non government agencies who are in working for the protection of consumers interest and as you know the needs of customers are also keeping keep on changing fast so unless the suppliers are fast enough and are capable of satisfying the change in needs the suppliers will lose the customers so in order to be present in the market and they have to talk with the needs of the customers so this again leads to the total quality management only by improving the quality of the product only by increasing the quality of the product they can survive in market now the third factor is the need for earning profit instead of making profit we have already seen that first the market will be sellers market and when more and more suppliers are coming uh, come up then it becomes a sellers market or uh, first it is sellers market and then it becomes buyers market so when the market is sellers bar market then the suppliers can make the profit they can fix the sales price after adding the required profit to the cost price they just add the required profit to the cost price and they sell the product at that sales price so they can easily make profit if the market is sellers market but in the present world of competition the market is not sellers market but it is buyers market so here the market forces determine the selling price the producers or the suppliers cannot fix the selling price it is the market forces which determine the selling price that means selling price is fixed now if the producer or the supplier wants to make profit they have to earn profit by reducing the cost price because selling price is fixed now if he wants to make profit he has to reduce or control the cost price but the major components which make up the cost price are cost of the raw material the cost for energy cost for human resource so the supplier has no control on the cost of these inputs he has no control on the cost of material he has no control on the cost of energy he has no control on the human resource so if he want to earn the profit he has to reduce the quality cost quality cost means the cost incurred by an organization for making non conforming products so whenever a product is produced a lot of defective products will be there manufacturing defects will be there 
So only some 20 to 30 percent products will be defective usually. So if the producer can reduce the manufacturing defect, he can sell all the products, thereby earning the profit. So he has to reduce the defects during manufacturing. He has to produce all the products perfect. He has to do everything right first time and every time so that defects are reduced. He can sell all the manufactured products. In that case, he can earn the profit. So this is a total quality management approach. So these are the different factors leading to total quality management in an industry. So total quality management is the application of quantitative methods and human resources to improve the material and services supplied all the processes within the organization to improve the, all the processes within the organization to improve the degree to which the needs of customers are met. So these can be done with total quality management. Now the basic tenets of total quality management focus on customer satisfaction, both the internal customers and external customers. They have to focus on customer satisfaction. A continuous improvement is required. Employee investment and empowerment is required. Measurement and documenting the work. Doing it right the first time and every time. Effective communication, education and training about the quality requirements and quality management is required. The leadership from top is required to implement the quality system. Then providing everyone with opportunity to do their job properly. So for, to provide everyone in the organization with the opportunity to do their job properly and to contribute to the quality of the process and the product. Now the benefits of total quality management. The improvements in leadership qualities and more visible leadership from executives and senior managers. Since all the employees are involved in managing the quality, there can be improvement in the leadership qualities and there, uh, there will be more visible leadership from all the executives and senior managers. Involving personal in decision making process. The decision is not taken by the top management only, but all the personal are, personnel are involved in decision making process. So increase the confidence of personnel in their ability to carry out their work and to achieve the targets. So the re reduction of mistakes, increased pride in work, sense of achievement for workers. Then opportunity for self-development and self-improvement of personnel through a proactive involvement in work. Opportunity to engage in creative thinking to improve product quality and work environment. Increase cooperation, quality, and work environment. Increase cooperation, improve teamwork, and reduce conflict. So these are the benefits of total quality management. So there are a lot of benefits to implement total quality management in an organization. Now let us see the significance of safety and health in total quality management. The significance of safety in total, let us first see, now we are seeing the significance of safety and health in total quality management. First let us see the significance of safety in total quality management and after that we will see the significance of health in total quality management. So first, the significance of safety in total quality management. So from the figure, it is clear what is the significance of safety in total quality management. So the first and foremost concern for safety is employee health. 
So good health is a prerequisite for commitment to quality work and growth. The good health of employees is a prerequisite for commitment to the quality of their work and quality of their work. So next is job security. The job security is always influenced by ill health of employees. So effects are required to maintain the general health and keep off occupational hazards, hazards uh, uh, occurring in the work area or hazards associated with occupation should you have to keep off these hazards in order to increase the job security. The next is media. Poor performance of an industry on safety may lead to adverse opinion in publicity and this will ultimately affect the market share of that particular company. The next one is production. So accidents can cause in an industry. So accidents always cause downtime of machinery and the loss of available man days and this will affect production and profitability of an organization. And the next factor is poor quality, poor working conditions in an organization and the unsafe acts by employee are con always contribute to poor quality of the product. The next is insurance cost. So the frequent accidents in an industrial plan lead to more spending on worker compensation. An insurance company may tend to increase the insurance premium for such industries. Next is regulatory agencies. So the accidents and fatalities always call for investigation by regulatory agencies like police, factories inspector, pollution control board representative, etc. So this will cause wastage of manual. So from this we can see that safety is very important for maintaining the quality of an organization. So this is the significance of safety in total quality management. Now let us see what are the approaches taken in different industries towards safety. So these are the different management styles used in industry for managing safety. First one is SWAM. Safety without any management process. So, there will not be any safety management system implemented. So, without any management process, they are looking for safety. That is one style of maintaining safety. The second one is no naturally occurring reactive management. 77% of all the companies are coming under this type of safety management, naturally occurring reactive management. And the third one is world class safety management world system. So only seven percentage of companies belong to this category. Now let us see what are the difference between these three types of management approach. So one thing is that all these three management approach will have the conventional safety practices like establishment of a safety committee adhering to safety rules, promotion of safety, accident investigation and reporting. All these are present in all the three types of safety management approach. But the different lines in management, commitment and ownership of safety and planning interpersonal relations 
and people involvement. These are the difference between these three types of approaches towards safety management. So here in, the, in this table we can see the characteristics of these three different approaches for safety management. You can see that in world class approach, the responsibility for safety is taken by line management. But in long style, this responsibility is not understood or defined. Whose responsibility is maintaining the safety? That is not understood or defined in long style. And in the case of strong style, this is not at all recognized or that is rejected. Normally is taking responsibility for safety in swamp style. And again, how this approach is perceived in world class style, this safety management is considered as a good business investment to maintain the quality or total quality. All the students are requested to switch up their video. Someone is keeping the video on. All are requested to keep their video off. Camera off. So in Vanguard style, this, in, this is considered as uh, the safety systems are considered as good business investment. But in norm style, this uh, implementing safety management system is considered as a cost. And in swamp style, it is considered as a burden. And different management practices of these three styles are given in this table. Now in an industry, what causes an accident? Usually the accidents do not happen. They are always caused. So what causes an accident? Usually an accident is caused by unsafe act of an employee or unsafe condition, unsafe work condition. So unsafe act is attributed to an individual working in the organization. So this type of accident can may be due to lack of understanding or the negligence on part of that employee. So such unsafe act can cause accidents in an industry. Another one is unsafe condition. So unsafe condition is attributable to management responsibility. It is the management who has to provide safe condition for working. So managing safety in an industry involves prevention of unsafe act and providing a safe work environment, safe workplace. So this is the fundamental principle of safety management. So how a safety program can be implemented? Safety management system can be implemented in an industry. So for that, we have to first identify the hazard. Hazard ident identification should be done. Then identify the risk associated with the task. And then assess the risk caused by that particular hazard. What is the risk caused by that particular hazard? So the risk assessment can be done through hazard identification and job safety analysis. So what is meant by a hazard? So hazard is something that has potential for harm. We have already seen what is a hazard. It is something that has a potential for harm. And what is the risk? Risk is the likelihood of occurrence of a hazard. Likelihood of occurrence of a hazard and the consequence in case that hazard occurs. So that is the risk, the likelihood of a hazard occurring and the consequence in case a hazard occurs. That is known as risk. 
So we have to identify the risk and then assess the risk, assess the level of risk caused by that hazard if it occurs. So this is done through job safety analysis. So job safety analysis helps us to identify the risk and hazards, protect from danger and estimate the potential to harm, that is the risk level. Estimate the risk level, the potential to harm. So the job safety analysis consists of different steps such as identification and selection of the task, breaking down the task into different steps, identification of potential hazards in each step, assessment of the risk caused by that particular hazard, elimination of the risk, recommendation of safe work procedure. All these are The basic steps of JSA approach. Now, the first step is selection of the task. Each job needs to be analyzed prior to its starting. So, the operator should be briefed about the risk involved in the performance of a job and the procedures and precautions to be followed for safe performance of task. So the, now the breaking down of the task into various steps. That is the next step. After identifying the task, select, selection of the task, the task should be broken down into various steps. So a complete task may involve various risks at different steps. So in order to study the risk associated with each step, the task should be broken down into various steps. Next step is identification of hazard. So the basic tool used to identify a hazard in a step of step is through inspection. So a checklist of potential hazard is prepared to carry out this inspection. So after identifying the hazard, assessment and elimination of the risk should be done. So once the hazards are identified, the risk factor is assessed and the various hazards are classified according to the seriousness of impact and priority for remedy. So the severity of a particular hazard, the risk, severity of that risk is like this. It is graded as low, medium and high. Effect of, if the effect of risk is minimum, the rank is given low. If it is moderate effect, medium. Dangerous to life, it is high. Again, the likelihood of occurrence. If the probability is very less, it is given a score of low. May take place often, it is considered as medium occurrence. And if it is very frequent happening, it is considered as a high occurrence. So all these are tabulated here for risk assessment, severity level, likelihood of occurrence, population affected, against the identified hazard. And using these three factors, you can calculate the risk factor. So population affected, if only 5 persons are affected, it is considered as low, 5 to 15 considered as medium, more than 15 it is considered as high. So using this information we can calculate the risk factor for a particular hazard by this equation. Severity level into likelihood of occurrence into population affected, That's, that will give you the risk factor. And based on the risk factor, the hazards are tabulated 
according to in the order of their diminishing severity so the final phase of job safety analysis is recommendations for safe work procedures so this involves recommending ways to control the associated hazards in each step of the job and many a time such a recommendation indicates an instruction of direction for safety task assignment this is known as sta so the recommendations indicate instruction for safety task assignment the advantages of sta are it raises safety awareness within each group and is a the reminder that hazards to exist it assigns each member of the team a safety responsibility it demonstrates management's commitment to safety so after job safety analysis now the step is for implementation safety implementation of a safety program the implementation of a safety program helps us avoid the necessary cost from any accident and loss of production so the target is to have a zero injury and this is an essential element of total quality management so if you want to achieve the total quality management a safety program should be implemented so these elements of such as safety program are include three elements engineering education and enforcement in engineering phase attention is given for planning and development of a safety program and hazard identification as we have already discussed hazard identification and job safety analysis are important techniques involved in development of a suitable safety program and second phase is the education of all the people associated with the execution of the project so the education of people can be imparted through training and orientation program display of posters and banners use of uh, signages safety task assignment etc can be used for educating the people and the ultimate result of the safety program depends on its enforcement so enforcement requires a strong will and determination on the part of management of the organization so this is about the safety program now let us see statistical quality control so statistical quality control or sqc refers to the use of statistical methods to improve or enhance the quality for customer satisfaction so it is the use of statistical methods to improve the quality of the product or service for customer satisfaction so it is a strategy for reducing the variability which is the root cause of many quality problems so within every factory the conditions fluctuate with time variations occurs with time the variation occurring incoming raw materials in machine conditions in the environment and in operator performance so many of these variations cannot be predicted with certainty although sometimes it is possible to trace the initial pattern of such variation to their root cause 
So if we have collected sufficient data from these variations, we can tell in terms of probability what is most likely to occur next if no action is taken. So if we know what is likely to occur next given certain conditions, we can take suitable actions to try to maintain or improve the acceptability of the output. So this is the rationale of statistical quality control. So using a statistical methods to improve the quality, to predict what will happen next. So based on that prediction, they can do some, they can take some actions to prevent anything unwanted, prevent from anything unwanted from happening. So this is the rest law of statistical quality control. Now let us see the Six Sigma principle which was developed by Motorola for maintaining the quality of their product. This is actually similar to zero defects program. So the goal of this Six Sigma principle as well as zero defects is zero defect in everything we do. That is the goal. There should be zero defect in everything we do. So in this approach, everyone assumes the responsibility toward reducing his or her own errors to zero. Now let us see the steps to Six Sigma. Six Sigma approach of quality. the Six Sigma approach, the tolerance for defects is set at process mean plus or minus Sigma. That is the tolerance level for defects in a product. It is set as process mean plus or minus Six Sigma. That is the tolerance range. Now, the inherent variability in the product is kept half the tolerance range that is process in plus or minus three sigma so the inherent variability is set at process mean plus or minus three sigma now if the process mean can be controlled within a target quality of plus or minus 1.5 sigma then the area of the curve beyond 6 sigma will be only 3.4 ppm. So here tolerance range is process mean plus or minus 6 sigma and the inherent variability is kept at process mean plus or minus 3 sigma and now the target is to keep the process mean within process mean plus or minus 1.5 sigma. If this can be, this target can be achieved, that is keeping the process mean within the variation of plus or minus 1.5 sigma, the curve, the area of the curve beyond the plus sigma or minus sigma will be only 3.4 ppm. That means there will be a maximum of 3.4 defects per million pieces produced then this is actually equivalent to almost perfect quality because if you produce some 10 lakh pieces only 3 or 4 will be defective that is actually nearly near zero near zero defect that is almost perfect quality so this is an approach towards total quality management. Six Sigma concept. The six steps used to achieve Six Sigma quality by Motorola are given here. Identify the product you create or service you provide, identify the customer for your product or service and determine what they consider important, identify, identify your needs to provide the product or service, 
that satisfy the customer, define the process for doing the work, mistake proof the process, and eliminate waste effort. Ensure continuous improvement by measuring, analyzing, and controlling the improved process. By doing all this, the process need can be kept within plus or minus sigma and maintain achieve perfect quality. So the aspect common to common between six sigma and zero defect is that both the concepts require maximum participation by the entire organization. These two concepts, zero defects and six sigma approach, this requires the participation of all the members of the organization. That means a total quality management approach. So both the six sigma approach and zero defect approach lead towards total quality management. Now the four phase approach used by general models to see six sigma are given here. Measure, analyze, improve and control. Select the critical quality characteristics, determine the existing frequency of defects, define the target performance standard, validate the measurement system, and establish existing process capability. That is the first phase measure. Now the second phase analyze includes understanding when, where, and why defects occur by defining performance objectives and sources of variation. The third phase Improvement. Identify the potential causes, discover cause-effect relationship, and establish operating tolerances. And the fourth phase is controlling. Maintain improvements by validating the measurement system, determining the process capability, and implementing process control system. So, so far we have seen the importance of safety in, the significance of safety in total quality management. Now let us see the significance of health in total quality management. The so general occupational health problems, the public health, general public health, some hazards encountered are tobacco, then bad drinking water quality, cancer, radiation, drug abuse and alcoholism, unhygienic food, all these affect the general public health. Now the cause of health hazards, particular to industry, these are general things, general things which affect the public health. Now these are the causes of health hazards in an industry. It can be heat, can be hold, hold, can be light, noise, chemicals, and occupation diseases like radiation, chemicals, all these can cause illness. So these are the causes of health problems in an industry, heat, cold, light, noise, radiation, chemicals, etc. Now the control of health risk in an industry. So the health risk may be controlled through the different measures like engineering measures, legal measures, medical measures such as medical examination, periodical examination, health care, health education, all these things. So maintaining healthy environment in an industry involves different activities like pre-employment, medical examination, continuous education on health and hygiene, periodical inspection of the site, provision of proper, proper personal protection equipment provided to employees, good medical and clinical facility, etc. Now let us see the safety and health management systems used for achieving total quality management.
One of such system is ISO 9000. This is which is a quality system standard. So based on this ISO 9000 quality system standards, organizations can set up their quality management systems. Now, and the other quality management standards are OSHA, Occupation Safety and Health Management, Health Administration Standards followed in USA. HASA WA74, Health and Safety and Work Act, UK. And in India, several acts are there. Factories Act, Workmen Compensation Act, the Indian Electricity Rules, the Gas Cylinder Rules, etc. So I am not going into the case studies that you read by yourself. So that is the end of this particular unit. So today we have covered the introduction to food safety, then food safety system and total quality management. So I think we can stop today and we can continue with the rest of the unit tomorrow at the same time, 10.30 a.m.